Hello, welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by MagnaCraft Consulting Team, anchored by Niyi Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Niyi Dumade. Welcome, welcome. My name is Ni Dumade, founder, CEO, Magnicraft Consulting. Magnicraft Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps local churches grow healthier through empirical assessments, trainings, and strategic blueprints. Okay, so you're welcome to this Facebook live broadcast show and YouTube channel. Um, I, I want to just uh, tell you that this is just part four of how to engage a church consultant. We've done part one, two, and three. Please, if you have missed that series, it's a build up from where we stopped from. Please get to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, Monday Morning Matters, and you will be able to get all those. Um, we've been on for over three years, and there are quite a lot of good videos, good content for you and your church. And so we are glad that you are part of this live broadcast. I'm the lead consultant of Magnicraft Consulting. And of course, I want to thank everyone who have been giving some valuable content to our social media handles on Facebook, on YouTube. A big thank you for the shares, the comments, and all these things. I'm also a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. And so I, I, I want to just go on straight on so that we can do a part four of how to engage a church consultant. I'm a certified church consultant. I've been able to consult with a number of churches, and I can tell you that we need to, uh, our churches in Nigeria especially, need to have a, a, a better way to engage church consultants. Church consultants, okay? Because church consultants have a way of providing insight into problems that are holding a church back from accomplishing its mandate or its mission. And so when a church has a vision and a mission statement, um, there are quite a lot of things that can hinder the church from expressing themselves fully in getting the Great Commission actualized. And so when you want to engage a consultant, what are the things you look out for? And that's what we did in part one, two, and three. And then we want to get on with what we are going to say in part four. Some church consultants uh, usually have assessment tools. So you need to know that because you're going to have, they're going to come with a way to assess your church one, you have to be willing for them to come with those assessment tools to be able to check what is needed to be addressed in your church. 
And so the, sometimes it comes with a survey, sometimes it comes with a request for information, sometimes it comes with all kinds of tools, templates to, for you to fill up. And that also will let you us know what exactly to, um, to deal with in your church. And so sometimes as a church consultant, we don't um, like to go about the symptoms, okay? We don't want to go about the symptoms or your complaints or the things you are worried about. You need to ensure that those assessments, uh, 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 you need to trust in those assessments, whether it's a cultural assessment, discipleship pathway assessment, church health assessment, church growth assessment, cultural assessment. There are quite a lot of assessment. And Magnicraft Consulting has quite a lot of those assessments to help to find out where your church is lacking or weak or, 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 or giving less attention to. That if you can give attention to those things, your church is going to find full expression, a better expression in the future uh, with proven success following all the recommendations from the fallout of those uh, interview uh, of those, those surveys, and you know, in, in the course of engaging a church consultant, uh, usually we do um, interviews for the church staff or some key stakeholders in the church. And so, the the leaders of the church must be willing to allow the church consultant free course to discuss, to make inquiries, because sometimes the the most times the surveys or, or the assessment that, tools that we have can only get as far as getting some quantitative uh, feedback but we need to know that we, are, we need to also acknowledge that we are dealing with human beings and so because we are dealing with human beings we need to have some qualitative uh, feedback so that we can be able to be have a balanced uh, approach to um, having the qualitative um, feedback and the quantitative feedback so when you are choosing a church consultant you want to make sure that there's also that doctrinal and denominational compatibility with your own church you don't have to get you don't need to get a church consultant who don't believe in your creed or your belief system it's important for a church consultant to be familiar okay that's why sometimes if you're going to be a good ch church consultant you have to be listening you have to make sure you do more of listening okay it's important for church consultants to be familiar with the belief system the mission statement of the denomination you are trying to con consult and that's where the engagement starts from if we miss it from that engagement then you're going to be whatever assessment you are getting out from the exercise will not be used to reinforce the understanding of the belief system and the mission statement of the church. And so once you are able to get that in place, the process will help you and your church implement the changes that there needs to be in your mission statement and in your mission actualization, or rather, and in your belief systems. Okay, some church consultants are highly um, aligned with a single denomination, so you have to look at uh, um, that church consultant, church consultant if they have been used to consulting a church of that of your um, standard, of your kind of character. Others are more uh, denominational agnostic. They can go to different denominations. How flexible is a church consultant to go away from his uh, comfort zone to reach out to a wide variety of Christian denominations? So be sure to choose a church consultant that understands how to work with your denomination, how to work with your denomination. Don't also generalize because every church is unique, even when you are of the same denomination. Every church is unique. And so be weary of a church consultant who has a way of getting a, a process and using it that as, as the template for all, all churches. Okay, let's understand that there are different DNAs, there are different church, size, church sizes, there are different uh, locations of churches, which makes it very, very important for us to look at the context at which we are looking at um, churches. Churches of different sizes faces unique challenges. Okay, there's need for a 500-member five, congregation. The needs of a 500-member uh, congregation are way different from the needs of a 10,000 site congregation. Okay, so there are church consultants who are very used to smaller churches and they don't know how to uh, uh, um, address uh, bigger churches. And so we need to know that there are differences in those areas. It's important that your consultant, the consultant also experience working with churches that look familiar with yours. I made that clearly. So that the, the, the strange 
um, uh, the, 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 your church should not be strange in what in, in, in strange when he's as doing some in-depth assessment of your church, in-depth assessment of church. Many church concerns jump right into using those proven methods without looking at the engagement process. And I can tell you that the engagement process is what uh, uh, gives a good foundation for a successful assessment and implementation of whatever ideas that there be. So this can result into an ineffective change, which if it's not properly managed in terms of the engagement process of the church and the church consultant, there's going to be some form of um, um, a failure, expected failure, and of course, um, a, a disappointment. in it. So make sure that you are engaging a church consultant who takes time to do extensive need assessment. Don't box a church consultant with uh, when he begins to talk on spe special specialization. Because sometimes the specialization might be a, a, an idea that your church doesn't really need as a further point to change. So let's get, make sure that you start off from a generalistic perspective and then get all the issues. Once you are able to get all the issues and then you cannot begin to look for specialized, specialized um, church consultant to be able to really look at those things uh, to, to, to change them. From what they are, a good way to check if a church consultant is evaluating your based, your ability based, evaluating you based on their preference instead of on your actual need. Okay, so don't engage a church consultant when he's looking, is 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 having his own preference on the table. Rather, the actual need that is going on in the church is what the church consultant need to use. Okay, he has to talk to the staff, the families, the volunteers, the stakeholders in your church and things like that. So that means that one of the best ways to vet a church consultant in the early phases of your partners, the, the days you are going to engage them, is to pay attention on how much they talk versus how much they listen. Okay, Let, what questions are they asking? What, uh, how much of, of what you are saying are they listening? Because it, those are what the things that will help to fix the problems, to, the, to address the issues that are going to be um, um, discovered through the in-depth assessment. So, first of all, get, engage a course of church consultant who has a deep understanding of your ministry um, framework, okay, your ministry framework. If there's no understanding, there's going to be more harm than good. So, the most experienced church consultant can adapt to the problems your church is facing at any point in the church consultation process. So, for the beginning, is what is very important. The beginning is key to what will happen in your church. The most, um, the, 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 the thing is, let us be um, trustworthy of what the church consultant will do. First of all, he has to be professional so that you you you, you don't, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I'll give a, a, a scenario where um, somebody goes to the hospital and for checkup, because that's what church consultants do to diagnose, to help churches, to help them become better in terms of health and vitality. And so you, when you see someone going to the, to the um, doctor in the hospital and is, is submitting his hand, only he has a broken hand. But you see, you have to submit your whole body because what happens is that you cannot treat a part of a body without assessing the whole body. Because what happens in the part might have has caused a problem in other parts of the body because all the parts of your church are connected together there's no how there will be pain in one part and the other part does not feel the pain when that happens it shows that there is no connectedness in the in the church and so when you are engaging a church consultant you have to be open and be willing and yielded to in-depth assessment you might be shocked that from outside eyes and professional eyes, there are certain things that the, the, the church consultant is going to point out that you may not be able to um, uh, fish them out. Okay, well, like for example, what, one of the things we do is a secret, secret shopper. You are so used to your church that you don't know that there's cobwebs. You are so used to your church, you don't know certain things that are wrong in your church. And so when you want to engage a church consultant, through a secret, chop, chop, secret, secret um, guest chopper, they will tell you some things that you, you are used to, but they are not good for your church. They are not good for your church. Your entry point to your church, how 
how, 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 uh, what is the experience like for a guest? Okay, you are used to the entry point being what it is, but that might not be a good experience for somebody who is coming to your church for the first time. And so, um, every, uh, even more important uh, than doing an initial evaluation, okay, when you are engaging a church consultant, is for the church consultant to work with you through the entire implementation of the process. I've seen ch uh, churches who have engaged me, we've done the assessment, and it, you know, because the assessment is not the, is, the assessment is not the solution to your problem. The assessment actually brings, up, brings to the table what you need to address. And most of the time, when the assessment comes, for example, you go to the doctor and the doctor says that you have high blood sugar in your blood. And what happens is that you know the solution. You have been taking too much coke, you have been taking too much sugar, you've been taking too much carbohydrates. And so because you know, you, are, you, you know what you have done that led to the problem that was discovered by the in-depth assessment, you know that you have to stop taking coke, you have to stop taking all the sugar and too much carbohydrate in your in food intake. But that's how it is. But that does not mean that you don't need the church consultant to help you in the entire implementation process. Usually, after it, an in-depth in -depth assessment of your church, you need, the, you, you need to allow the, the church consultant to, to give you some recommendations. Okay, some recommendations to, 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 to what is going on in your church. Some recommendations that, to, what, to, to how to address the pertinent issues discovered from the in-depth assessment. Okay, what are the things? And sometimes the, the recommendation is not to solve the symptom, is to solve the very disease because the symptom is actually an indication that there's something wrong. So dealing with what is wrong is what will deal with all the indicators to tell us human beings or the church that there's something wrong in the, in the church. Sometimes you addressing a, a problem that you think is wrong might not be exactly what that should that's the, the solution to that problem should be like for example most of the time when there's a problem in the church most pastors usually want to restructure oh i have this, I have this problem because people are not in the right places but ra rather i will want to say that the church should go back to vision vision um casting vision um and vision envisioning stage so that you'll be able to dream again and then from the dreaming again, do we have the people to power the vision and then you restructure? It's better you go back to the basics, so don't go back to the fundamentals and see how you're going to build up back there because that's what made the growth phase to happen in the first place. So you are in the maintenance mode. That doesn't mean that you should start restructuring your church for what it is. Okay? Thank you for everyone that is on the, on the, on, on the live feed. Thank you for all the... Um, the, all, all what is all the, all the people who have been doing my live broadcast. Uh, one of the things I would say is that I'll, when you are engaging, the last thing I'm going to say is that when you are engaging a church consultant, let's see how you the uh, the, uh, 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 the church consultant will address root issues, not not the fruit issues. You see, don't get a church consultant to begin to shed off leaves because shedding of leaves. Have, has not solved the problem. You need to address, go back to the root cause of the problem because when you address it from the root, then the fruit will take alignment from the intake of what is going on in the roots. Okay? Just like the, the, the in analogy I use again as the fire and the smoke. When you have smoke, there's panic, the house is on fire. But you see, we don't go about um, killing the smoke. We want to see where is the fire. Once you are able to quench the fire, then the smoke is going to disappear. So these are some of the things that uh, uh, we are going to have discussed on how to engage the church consultant. Be concerned how the needed changes will be implemented. Don't stop at discovering what is wrong. What are the solutions? How do we implement the solutions? How do we bring about the needed, because that's where the real work is, change management. You want to move from where the church is right now to where God wants it to be. So be concerned. I, as you engage the church consultant, be concerned how the needed changes will be implemented, how we are going to achieve the recommendations in the report, how we are going to bring to fruition the things that we have envisioned or discovered from the in-depth assessment.
I want to wrap it up here because I want to stop within 20 minutes so that at least we know that we have so much. There's still a last lap for this part five on how to engage a church consultant and that will help us. Please, if, this, if you have any church-related question, please feel free to um, hook up with us. Um, let me have your questions. You, we do a lot of trainings. Yesterday I was in Bible school training some uh, leaders of churches. We do trainings for churches. Be sure to contact us so that we can help you become better. We can help your church become better. You have any church-related questions or inquiry, let us have them via all our social media handles. I'm always behind them to engage you. Sure, you'll get more than an answer from me. Uh, any question, please let me know. If this video has been useful to you, please give us a like, do us a share to your community, give us a good comment, uh, drop us a comment. You've learned from me. You, I, I love to hear from you. I, I, you've learned from me. I also want to learn from you. Drop us a comment through this com comment section. Um, what to feel like engaging a church consultant and things like that. Okay. We also do. Um, um, we also do church consultation, revitalization, trainings, and strategy planning. Reach out to us. You want to become a church consultant? Also, reach out to me. We can. We, uh, we have, they have. There's fantastic discount with Church Consultation University. Reach out to us. We will help you become better in uh, reaching out your goals and helping more churches um, in a fuller dimension. Till I come your way next week Monday with another continuation of Part Five. Please, I say bye bye and God bless you.